So, if I can um, welcome everybody to the um, Linguistics Department Seminar for the fifth week of, uh, of term. Um, today, uh, we are very fortunate to have um, somebody with expertise that we don't usually uh, find. Um, certainly, I don't know of anybody else in London who's, who's done the kind of work that, um, that Amira is doing. Um, and I think some really, really interesting perspectives from, uh, from the research. So, uh, Vera da Silva Sina from the University of East Anglia. Um, Vera is finishing up her um, PhD research, uh, which she's been doing in Brazil. Um, she has uh, extensive fieldwork experience working on indigenous languages from a number of different groups in Brazil, um, including in the Xingu National Park, working with the Awechi and others, um, in Amazonia, and also here amongst groups on the border between Brazil and, um, and Peru. Um, so she's going today to tell us about uh, her research project, which is involved uh, looking at the expression of um, temporality and time um, in uh, several of the languages that she's been working with. Um, those of you who have uh, done any linguistics will have come across this as being a very famous chestnut, uh, particularly in the dimension of the so-called superior wharf hypothesis and you know, wharf's claims about temporal expression in a language like Tupi. Now, those of you in descriptive linguistics, that's, this is what we'll be talking about this week, right? So um, Vera's uh, research is going to be really relevant to us. Um, my understanding is that we have a film, and then Vera's going to talk to you about um, the material that's in the film, and then we'll have the usual question and answer um, period towards the end of it. So, over to you. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Peter, for being here one more time and uh, so I think some of you already know my work before but it's not the same video we show in the last time and this is just uh, a documentary about what is time and culture yeah so let's see if you like and then we can talk about it um, full, in, full screen yeah If you think about and talk about time and place events in time. But the way this is done is not the same in all cultures. In our culture, we are used to thinking in terms of calendar time and clock time. But is this the same for everyone? show you mm -hmm. how time is spoken <laughs> and expressed Good. in the languages and cultures of three indigenous communities of Brazil. What's not planned then? I set out to explore by finding out 
about how people in indigenous cultures of Brazil understand time. Before going on to talk about my findings, let's ask a question. What is time? Actually, nobody knows the answer. Scientists disagree about the answers to some very basic questions. Does time really pass like a moving arrow? And does it have a single direction? Can we say that time exists apart from our experience of it? Do past, present, and future exist? Does everything have its time as well as having a location in space? Well, if so many scientists don't know the answers to these questions, I won't even try to answer them because my own question is difficult enough. My question is, does everyone around the world think and talk about time in the same way? To answer this question, I am going to take you on a journey to my home country, Brazil. But first, let's look at the way we are accustomed to thinking about time. Let's start by thinking about how we experience events. Every event has a duration, longer or shorter, a millisecond or an eternity. And every event has its own place in a sequence of events before or after the other events. What's more, we can orient ourselves in time just as we orient ourselves in space. So, for example, in space I can say that I am in London, in this building, and this room. In the same way, I can say that I am speaking today, or that I did something else yesterday, or that I will do something different again tomorrow. I can precisely locate the time of an event by using calendars and clocks. For example, I can say that my birthday is on the 19th of May. Clocks and calendars also enable us to measure time intervals, years, months, days, hours, minutes, seconds. All these ways of thinking about talking about time a second nature to us, but is this the way that everyone in every culture thinks about time? Lives in the village called Andrea Reposo, 
located in the Guru Spirit. The population of this village is approximately 120 people, including adults and children. Unikuni keep many aspects of their culture secret, but they are happy to share with us some other aspects, such as how they talk about and understand time. We are especially grateful for the help of Dr. Joaquin Kashinawa, the first doctor in linguistics from the village, who is working with us. in 
in a village called Saigal Masa with a population of 72. Their culture too is strong and vital. Everybody speaks their witty language, but many of them speak other languages too, such as Kamanga, Wanga, and Portuguese. The population is quite young, with many young adults and children. <laughs> They also like to sing, to dance, and play hookah hookah and play football. Cognitive 
means anything to do with thought or mind. And an artifact is something made by people. Tools are one kind of artifact. So, cognitive artifacts are tools for thinking. In our culture, we have numbers, calendars, and clocks, which give us concepts like weeks, months, and years. However, in Hunikuin, Kamaira, and Aoichi, there are no cognitive artifacts like calendars and clocks. So, what kind of concepts do they use to think about time? Well, they think about time not in terms of numbers, but in terms of events. So, what is an event? An event is something that happens or takes place. A child is born, an election takes place, an atom moves. With this in mind, let's see how events form the basis of concepts of time in Kamamra, Awiti, and Unikui. Their time is based on events, and we call this way of organizing time event-based time intervals. The main feature of event-based time intervals is the intervals is the event itself. In our culture, we often use event-based intervals. For example, we might say, I will meet you at lunchtime. Event-based time intervals are the way in which time is thought about in indigenous cultures in Brazil and in other parts of the world where people do not use clocks and calendars. So, to understand the event-based time intervals in these languages and cultures, we will show you how the life stages, the sunlight, the position of the sun, the water level, the stars, constellations, moon, activities, and a knot on the screen are the foundations for concepts of time in Unikuin, Kamayura and Aoichi. It is fact that in these cultures they don't have birthdays. What they have are life stages, child, adolescent, adult and old person. And for them, life is a process of learning and acquiring skills. And the stages of life are categories of social lives, not a point on a lifeline. Because these stages of life are based on skills and responsibility. Each member of the community will pass through this process and at each stage they will be recognized and respected for their social role in the community. So, the position of the sun, the light, daylight, and activities are important facts for the use of event-based intervals. Emma, when you went, morning, early in the morning, it is getting up. The sun is on top of the head. It means midday. You are Tim, Kala, and Emma. Who can look at time? Middle afternoon. Kwara, it said, oh home. The sun is gone. It disappeared. Sunset. Code support for plant Goko and back from the field. It is getting dark, the daylight is getting dark. Oka Hope, the sun is on top of the house, evening, sunset. At the third day, it is very dark, midnight. 
Traditionally, Kamayura used knots on a string to measure the duration of a fishing expedition. This was the traditional way to measure time. So when we were camping for the night, we untied the first knot. On that first day, we don't fish, we just plan the fishing. The next day, the next knot is untied and we begin fishing as planned. That's how it goes, untying a knot every day throughout the fishing trip. In Kamayura and Awiti, the stars also index time intervals. The activities of planting and harvesting cultivated crops and wild fruits, traditional festivals and fishing are linked to the appearance of nine constellations. These constellations also indicate the period of rain, heavy rain, cold weather, windy period, breeze, drought, sun heat, therefore indicating rain season and dry season. The moon's phases or shapes are indices of the beginning and end of the female menstrual cycle. They are event-based time intervals. We always look out for the moon. When we look at the moon, we already know and worry that we are going to menstruate. Women are always afraid of menstruation. Every woman has her own moon, so every woman menstruates on a different day. When the woman does not menstruate at her moon, the woman become anxious, or she knows that she is pregnant. I always menstruated at my moon. This one here, I never got it wrong.
Well, um, so I don't know how it will be. <laughs> I just leave that, yes? Mm -hmm. I just leave that, like that. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, um, before question and answers, I want to say thank you for to see it. And I really appreciate your comments, but first of all, I want to say we have a crew here which without the help of the team you see in the end, it was not possible, right? It's not only my work, it's our work together, because without the, the team from the field, which is Wadi and Joaquin and Pautu, this was not be possible to have here. And also without my supervisors, all the three are here, um, Luna and Alberto and Christine Hade. And also the musicians, uh, they compose the music you see in the beginning and in the end. They compose exclusively just for that, right? So in terms of a technical there's a lot of effect of a teamwork here. Without them, we couldn't make that as it is now. And also Alfredo, uh, he's not here. Um, he's teaching today, but he's the technician also with me. We went all through how to edit and put together all these ideas because you can imagine I had a 10, 10 hours of footage plus films and photos and ideas, and we have to put together in a in way I can talk to you and you understand what I'm saying. So hopefully I su we succeed to do that, so that's it. <laughs> and um, you can ask questions for me and can ask a question for the, for the supervisor team and and question for Adi and Joaquin and uh, Paul too. Adi is in Brasilia and, and he's, he's there. I can send him a message and he can answer. Yeah, we can talk with him on WhatsApp. <laughs> yeah, we can talk with him on WhatsApp if we want, if we need it. So. so. Can I just say there is um, too modest. It's mainly, largely her work. Yeah, of course. It is. Um, she went to all this. We don't have this, uh, I think you showed it earlier to some of these audience of what kind of means of transport and what she's been through and getting ill during field work due to black magic and things like that. But she survived for, the, um, for this research project. So she really uh, had a unique experience herself and collected this massive amount of invaluable data that we otherwise wouldn't know about. Um, and the important thing is the way the field work worked out is that Vera lived with these people. They're really not, uh, some of them are reluctant to share or reluctant to welcome people. Some of them have been battered and bruised with researchers going into communities yeah. and, you know, coming up with things for themselves which did not reflect, they were misinterpreted, and even Vera's previous work was, um, I think, misinterpreted by journalists who are after sensation, this title, like, these people know no time. <laughs> Titles like that, <laughs> which is um, absolutely funny to, I mean, all of us here, but it's actually quite not nice for, for people who welcome you to their homes and feed you and sleep next to you for days and end. So it's to great credit to Vera to actually succeed in bringing things together, showing things that are similar and different among these cultures that share quite a lot culturally. Some bits are shared linguistically, some are not, but um, in, you can read all about it in her upcoming papers and the thesis hopefully promised for March. So um, yes, we'll, we'll keep everyone posted who's interested in the outcome of, of this um, really precious and special research. So yeah, that's for me. And, um, Alberto, I don't know if you want to say. No, yes, uh, yes, thank you. Thank Vera because uh, she's a great student and uh, she's very modest. She's too modest, but uh, <laughs> she's mainly her work and, and it has been amazing to work with her. So, 
I couldn't do by myself. <laughs> um, thank you, Mary. Okay. Uh, if you are uh, arriving on the plane or the bus or something, uh -huh. and someone from the village is going to pick you up, right? Um, do you say I'm arriving um, around sunset, or um, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah, I know. Because um, I know that in the past they talk about. Yeah. Um, I'm not quite sure how they. Basically, how do they match up with Brazilian Euro European time okay. framework? And the two the two systems coexist, right? And now I know the culture. I could I could say around about the time in terms of uh, of a cultural uh, events, and as well um, link that with our, our time measured time. Because the difference between one time and another, because uh, our system is very precise, it's very measured, right? The event is not precise as we are, because the event is not based on the measurement, like number, numeric, metric, matrix. They are based uh, on the event, what they do in that part of the time, right? So, yeah. Um, the two systems we can do together, and I guess I can I can try to do the culture way and ask them to pick me up and hook a hook a time, yeah. <laughs> and they will understand because they know I know. Yeah. <laughs> and if it's not precise, how do how do um, yeah. how do you manage that? Yeah, because yeah. life pres the metrical part of our life makes sense in our kind of life we do right. Um, when you are in the village, these precise numerical moments is not necessary, is it? So. Well, except that a few of your people in your pictures were wearing watches. Yeah, they do. <laughs> they wear watches, they have uh, calendars, but doesn't mean they culturally they use that. They can use the two together. In cl uh, now, at the moment, is a very popular, we call hybrid calendars, right? They get the idea of event base and match together with our months and and the year, and they put all together in a beautiful art format, and they say that's that's unique Queen calendar, right? So it's beautiful, but you can see when you look properly how it's done, and you can see very clear the two systems that coexist together. But they they know. And they they able to to understand our way to think about time. Yeah, they do that. And the village they have that. Job. Talking about measurement and numbers and mm -hmm. uh, artifacts, could mm -hmm. you say something more about the uh, the use of strings for uh, knots in strings to uh, uh, to reckon time? when okay. they go on fishing expeditions. Yeah. 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 Okay, for example, it's quite, you could think traditionally when you go to, to, to a fishing time, right? And then the, how you measure that, how you tell your, your people in the village when you come back, or how long this will take, and how it's planned. So in our IT, uh, they use the knot and the string. So the person who go to plan everything, they do, a knot, several knots in the string. So they are not counting the knots. Each knot represents what most or less a day they go to, to stay. But also the representativity as well. Embed everything in one knot, right? That's why when he say the first day we don't count this and this knot is not important. It's only a mean we arrive. <laughs> yeah? But there's no activity linked to the knot symbolically. So on the next day, the next knot is untied, and then we, we had done the activity we planned to do. So as I understood, the, that knot, the, every night, every day, when they finish the, 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 the activity and go to overnight, they untie the knot. That knot means the activity of the day is finished, and the next day comes another activity. But then and you think, oh, but they would count days in there. I said, yeah, but when they count days as a day, like past day for the next day, how many days, they will count with the number, which is the fingers. 
one finger, two fingers, and then one and two, and then a hand, right? And then you can see when there's a big number, they can go to the fingers, the hands and the feet, and then when they fit my feet and hand finish, they can borrow off the neighbor. So, but the, the, the numerical moment of measure these days, right, is by this number. But the activity of the day and the passage of the one day overnight to another night is measured with the, um, the knot. Yeah? So, and then you can argue, oh, but is a cognitive artifact? I, I think so. It is a cognitive artifact, not a calendaric or nometrical one in that way, because it's not precisely. But there's a mechanism of to measure time. It's very interesting that the, to point out when we mentioned the Sapir Wolf hypothesis in the beginning, that um, so we, we kind of think about uh, the, the way to discover what we think about when we think about when we talk about time. So if we say time flies, do we really think about time that you know, it's got wings and it flies? Um, or it, it, there's quite a few um, metaphors that we use to refer to time. So we somehow think of time as a moving thing. Maybe not really flying, but there's still, something is, is moving. And also we can move. We are approaching a bright future, or we are moving away from our past. So there's got to be time and motion really related. But this is something that's really interesting. There's nothing like that in those cultures. They don't talk and they don't think about time as something that moves, or that you move in it, or that you are somehow contained in time as we are. Uh, as we, we think. So language and, and culture are really quite rela closely related. It's a very intimate relationship. And we can say that um, thinking is really flexible, but what is very different, and this is something that's quite related to superior world hypothesis, is that um, habitual thinking differs. And we can see through language how it does. So they habitually don't have to think about precise time at all. They don't need it. And that's why they don't think about it. But they can if they need to. So I think that's the, the kind of but this, this, the, the interesting thing about this is that it, it actually argues against the Wolf Sapir hypothesis. Yeah, in, but in the way in which the Wolf and Sapir hypothesis is usually understood, uh, yes. understood and talked about and, and taught indeed. I mean, because these people are not kind of uh, trapped in one particular yeah. cultural conceptual system, they're able to adopt another one. Yeah. Um, but the language is is actually a reflection of cultural practices rather than being mm -hmm. a, a determinant of a direct determinant of thinking. Mm -hmm. I mean, it kind of entrenches certain yeah. ways of thinking, but it doesn't determine it. It's very really so, useful to talk about habitual thinking. And it's habitual I think, uh, yeah. I think the, and this relationship, when our relationship with time and do things, we precisely over um, think about the duration of the event we go to do. Mm -hmm. So therefore the times come first, right? They kind of emerge very big. In this culture, it's not how long that take, but how you do it, right? Mm -hmm. So. It's like the time is just, oh, is the, yeah, time is this, but, and that event is more important what I'm doing, who I'm doing, and why I'm doing, than measure that in a, in a metrical way. I don't, I don't, it's not what is important. important. I go to fish, every night I go to one tidal knot, that means I did what I have to do, and then close to my last note, I go to the, give a sign to the village, I'm back. If for a reason all these notes finish, and my family, the guy in, for another hand in the village, if everybody went to fish and they take so long time, the note is already gone and nobody come back, it's something going on, right? So all these things, so it's more important why I go to fish and get a lot of fish and bring home, than how long I would take to get one fish from the river, right? Or things like that, because we do that all the time. So that's why it's very prominent in our language as well, in terms of showing that. Um, and I think in this culture, they, they give value more 
of the relationship, what they are doing with their ambient, then to think this abstraction um, measurement of how long that, that, that event will take. But in some way, they do divide these events. That's why they have the part of the day, and otherwise they wouldn't do it, right? Something changes. Yeah. The the yeah. Everyone. So I finish. Change the perspective of change is a very important there because the the environment change and how you measure that, right? How you mark that. It's not a measurement, but you, how you identify that, mm -hmm. and then they create that to mark that change, but not a duration of that change. Mm -hmm. Something like that. Mm -hmm. I don't know. <laughs> I'm open for discussion. <laughs> If you can tell us something about the, the stimuli, that it, I think it's very interesting for some of you who are maybe embarking on future research careers uh, or thinking about it, at least at this point, or some projects that you may do yourself. So the stimuli we use for licitation, and um, especially those that didn't work, I think it's useful to know about those because we came with our own prejudice about, oh, let's see, is time a line or a circle? So let's give different stimuli and see how you know, could be one of those, and it's neither kind of. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. we have all these stimuli, beautiful pictures, ready and just um, ready to listen things. And then Vera called from the middle of the fieldwork and said, "It's not working." <laughs> so I think that's an interesting thing to think about how you how you actually listen to data without influencing people with your perspective uh, that you yeah. cannot really shake off easily. So maybe you can tell us about the. The, the, the yeah, because uh, yeah, it's uh, it's is what the 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 question of your research was how people conceptualize time, right? So the basic line for design anything to verify that is our way to think about time. So we clever sit together and say, uh, oh, let's go to put some pictures together with. They combine a, and a whole as an event. So one action, and it's an output, right? One action led to another. You can do one before and after, and all these ideas in there, right? It's perfect for us. I went to the field work, and the people look at that, is, and then start talking about. And then I, then I didn't take too long to understand they are not talking about the event. They are describe the photo. <laughs> <laughs> and the photo didn't bring anything, right? So they just go, oh, Vera, there's a man talking, oh, there's a man talking, yeah, we do have that, they do, that's the color, and things like that. And I said, well, but it's not that. And then he said, you know, I know you want to know about our time. Let's go to put that up, and I tell you, let's go to talk. <laughs> so that was, that's what they did. And the whole field work changed completely. And I said, phone her, said, sorry, but this stimuli is not working that way. But for another hand, it was working, because with that, I provoke just the stupid of my way to think. And they said, listen, if you really want to understand the way we think, Let's go to sit here and let's go to talk about. And then several ways, several narratives, and give me example and go around and about and say, did you see that? Did you see? It? Listen, this one is indicate that. And then after a while you understand what, what they are talking about. So that was the experience of the, the stimuli. So that's when the stimuli, you plan some stimuli or some um, Experiment for explicit language, and then everything is go negative, right? But then, then you have to look for the positive way, and I look for the positive way. It really was fantastic to simulate people talk about the real things, not what is in there. So yeah. we had stages of life like yeah. Yeah, baby, child, grown up, old, death. So we thought, hmm, are they going to put it one after another? Which one comes first? Does it come in a circle? How does you know just normal reasoning what can be? And none of this works because they do not situate it in any. These things are not contained. No, no, They're because uh, either linear or so, so yeah, yeah, because uh, the pregnancy of a lady is not like we do, right? We conceive and then we already give a name for the child already and the conceiving time. So the notion of what life is, notion of a human being is, is different as well, right? And then you give all these nine month things together was so funny and then they look said oh wow yeah oh, oh don't do that <laughs> and then <laughs> and then they start telling me how the pregnancy and how the conception and how it's done and the way they see that and why they see that so 
and it's completely different what we think in terms of a pregnancy and having a baby. So it's completely different concept, which led to the concept of time too. So, yeah. If I can be devil's advocate, I think what you're comparing is pre-industrial situations with post-industrial literate situations. If you think about, it, this is separate from language, right? Mm -hmm. So if you go back to earlier phases of people who spoke English, uh, in farming, you know, agricultural period, the, cal the calendar, so-called, was, was a, an event-based one. Harvest time, you know, planting time. You have festivals at times that are like harvest time, not because it's the 5th of January or the 23rd of mm -hmm. November. It's because that's when you actually harvest the plants. And the introduction of temporality was as much connected with the church and... Uh, you know, knowing wh when to go to prayers and so on, mm -hmm. not with people's daily rhythms of life. Mm -hmm. So the comparison I suggest is not between English and Awechi, but actually pre-industrial and post-industrial. Yeah, you can have that, but you have to think when I, why I came to this idea, because of this idea now they and cognition, for example, they have claimed the way we think about time is universal. We always think about time in terms of numerical and metaphorical from space, uh, from from time to space, and all this make a model. And everybody say, "Oh, everybody is as a human being. We do the same mapping, right?" And I say, "No, I'm not saying that because we don't. We can find. I'm not go to the level of compare." an industrial, not industrial thing, right? Because it's not my interest. My interest is to see how these people do in terms of mapping of, uh, to conceptualize time in relation to what the way we conceptualize time because people claim this way we do is universal, everybody does. And I say, no, it's not. Yeah, so. That's precisely my point, is that it's, it's not universal, even for speakers of English, in the sense yeah, that yeah. it's... Yeah. Yeah, but they seem, they seem to be very strong concept and... and it's more like for space-time yeah. mapping that comes through language. Yeah. This relates to uh, language as it is English, not just English, any other Indo-European language has this kind of way of referring to time that became yeah. habitual. So Christmas is coming, for example. That is a very common phrase in many languages. Um, or, you know, difficult times are behind us, or he left his past behind. It's the way we talk about time that generates habitual ways of mm -hmm. thinking about it, or referring to yeah. it. Um, so in that sense, I mean, the, the point that, that Peter has about industry, of course, I mean, these are societies agricultural. Yeah, when the clock came in England, so for example, yeah. the train here was yeah. a massive change in terms of behaving the way true. English community organized itself. Yeah. Well, I, I would yeah. say that it's, that, uh, that I, 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 think, I think Peter is right in, yeah. In, yeah, in, that's, in, that's in the sense that this is, this is not, these metaphors are not uh, necessarily attached to particular uh, linguistic families. Yeah, they are so if we look at, uh, uh, we, mm -hmm. we, we find exactly the same space-time mapping uh, in Chinese, for example, as you know, mm -hmm. and, and, that's, and it's quite ancient as well. Mm -hmm. uh, but again, Chinese, Ch Chinese society was a large-scale agricultural society, highly hierarchical. Mm -hmm. So in fact, I think it's pre-industrial. It, it, it goes back to, yeah. uh, to to states, basically, when you have states. So even in South America, you know, neighboring cultures, the Incas had the, the kipu, which was a kind of a string, you know, mm -hmm. but, but that was, that used counting. And mm -hmm. presumably this, and, and it was used for enumerating uh, production, agricultural production, and, and si mm -hmm. sizes of fields and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. These people don't have it, yeah. and, and I don't think it's because, just because of the language, mm -hmm. because actually this is something also important that the the, the 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 three languages that you investigated, two are closely related, but one is completely unrelated. Yeah. 
and yet they use exactly the same, actually exactly the same system. Yeah, it's exactly the same system. One is in the Xingu, and then you go up to Brazil, it's a huge distance, right? And a complete cultural unrelated, and they do exactly the same. And I investigate in other, in other communities as well, already in, in, the, in Rondonia, which uh, originated my research, and also does the same. So it's, um, but yeah, uh, the pre industrial and um, agricultural, and uh, they also play. Um, um, language just and it's a culture, is it? So language captures those mm. things that are relevant for the culture, the yeah. time, and where the culture is in the moment of time. Mm. The language just captures that, but by learning the language in the community, you transmit those yeah. beliefs, cultural practices, and you kind of continue this kind of way of phrasing things, this habitual, yeah. this is why the habitual thinking is, yeah. I think, a central concept, that language perpetuates. Yeah. You know, you know how you said about the, the moon phases? Oh, yeah. And every woman has her own moon? Yeah. Um, and they're waiting, they wait, or they worry if that moon passes, Yeah. you know, without menstruation. Yeah. yeah. So how do they talk in language about um, what will happen? Because even, even thinking about how to phrase the question, I have to say, if the moon passes, what will I do? <laughs> you know, like I have to use tents. So like, how do they talk about that? Oh, okay. That's another thing for this language. These languages are not tense smart, okay. right? These languages are modality and aspects language. So they have marks which indicate when and how things are done, right? So, and also, particularly now, I am Camerera, they have, uh, for example, if they tell me a story, they have to tell on this and come on the idea of evidentiality of the language. They have marks to to tell me who's a is a real story, is a fictitious story, is a go to happen but not go to happen. So they have several marks on the language, which is completely different from English or any Western country language. So it's another level of uh, discussion in terms of grammaticalization of time and language. Yeah. Yeah, in this case, this language is a mod model aspect of language and an evidentiality language. It's a very complicated grammatical thing. So many people try to understand, but uh, I didn't read them anything like say, oh, well, that's a good one, but I struggle to understand it. But it is, is that the case, yeah. So they don't talk about it as... They would say, I would say, for example, if I'm a witty, uh, I would say, oh, well, I will, uh, my moon is gone, is it? Nothing come up, I'm really preparing myself either. I'm pregnant. If I'm married, that's okay. If I'm not married, this will be a trouble. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the why they'll worry about it. Yeah? And there is a way to say things like that. Yeah, absolutely. It's not necessary mark time there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah? On the sentence, you mean? Yeah. yeah. It's more would be more the worry who is speak talking about than the time that's it. Okay. Yeah, there's no, they, they wouldn't do much time for that, no. They would make more how they are worried about it. Yeah, yeah so, yeah. More comments, questions? First, eliciting, trying to elicit the time information. You thought, well, they'll probably line up events linearly or cyclically. Yeah. You know, these ideas. Neither one of those are obviously the case. Do you have an, an argument or an idea as to what, how it's mapped? Because it's it's obviously not mapped. Like yeah, it's quite it's quite complicated, right? Because um, uh, to see. One way to see direction of time is to see how people refer to past and present and future, right? And then you see the lineality in there and, and behind and the front and things. So you can see already the kind of drawing. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, in our conceptualization of cyclical, we think 
things where they repeat and several times they must be cyclical. Cyclical, yeah? Cyclical or cyclical, yeah. So, but it's not the case for this culture, right? So, um, so if I, if everything I remember is a story in my eyes, so the big metaphor here is seeing things. Seeing things mean remember things, right? So, is that the direction for that? No, they are just sent on on a place, right? Um, they are, um, for example, the big, the time intervals of day and night and things are all linked with the nature and, and all the cosmology also linked with the moon and the sun. The sun is a powerful thing, right? And then you look at the narrative of the sun and how this combine with the existence of being their self and combine the existence of their identity of their self. You don't really see the direction of time is a cycle and repeating things <coughs> doesn't mean cyclical because every moment is something happens differently. So although it's, you know what I mean? So the conception is saying, well, it can't be the same tomorrow. There'll be something different, right? So it's almost experiential rather than... Yeah, yeah, I, I would say so. But we have to be careful about this kind of be the idea of now and uh, things like that, because it's not like that, because they have memories, they have cosmology, right? So they also live off the history, they constitute themselves, so they, we can't argument that. But we, for sure, I can say it's not a cycle. I can say it's not one line, no. But I don't know <laughs> which one is, right? But I can say what are not, yeah? But I, I didn't reach the idea I couldn't draw, really, so fast. I couldn't find any indication I could do that. Thank you. It may not be a coincidence that one second is more or less the same as an average human heartbeat. Right. But is there any, the most obvious or the most salient periodic thing which anyone can encounter is their own heartbeat? The most cyclic, and it has to be cyclic, because if it's not cyclic, you're probably dead with something or dying. Oh, but, well. but do they have any, any concept of heartbeats? No, I didn't look at that. No, no, no. They probably has, but then, then again, my experience of, uh, of um, um, body and concept of bodies told, gives me some argument what is bought for me, not necessarily is bought for our culture, right? So that they see the way the body is in relation to the universe they live is different concept what and one good example is what is disease. Right? So what should be one a well in the couch way what should be diseased without sickness, right? So and then you can see there's two ways to see uh, person as a whole and the body and part of the body. So I would say no, I don't think we need to investigate that, but I would say it would be a quite a different concept. Okay, well let's thank Vera for her talk. <laughs> <laughs>